Hello everyone, welcome to another Friday new product post here at SparkFun Electronics. This is Robert and I am back to show you some new cool products. But first, you might have noticed a change in the studio. This is the first of many iterations that we'll be going through in making the studio super awesome. But first, let's talk about new products. This is the week of tiny products. Our first tiny product is this little tiny LiPo battery. We have been carrying a 110 milliamp hour LiPo battery previously, but this one's a little bit different. We had a blog post a while back about some e-textile project where some things shorted out and it wasn't good. So now we have a very specialized battery. This is very similar to the other 110 milliamp hour battery, but this has a very low discharge rate. This is capped out at about 2C, which the C in a LiPo battery or most batteries stands for the discharge rate. So since this is a 110 milliamp hour and it's a 2C, C being the discharge rate, it is two times the capacity. So 110 times two equals 220. So this has a max discharge rate of about 220 milliamps, which is relatively low and it's pretty safe for most applications. You're not gonna break anything or explode anything or set things on fire at that low current. So it just basically has a modified protection circuit on it that will drop out a lot lower than most batteries. So if you're looking for something for your e-textile application that isn't gonna short out and create a fire, check out this guy. Next up, we've got a simple but very useful product. We've got these little jumpers. These jumpers are interesting because on one end, they have alligator clips, and on the other, they have male little um, jumper pins. So if you've got a breadboard and you've got bare wires over here that you wanna clip onto, like uh, motor leads or something like that, it's really nice to have something to where you can clip onto the lead and then plug this into the breadboard. So essentially it turns any wire or any conductive pin into something that you can then plug into a breadboard. These come in a pack of four, two red, two black. They're about that long in length and they're a really great thing to have in your prototyping toolbox. Next up, we have a new set of crimping pliers. These are nice because they're ratcheting. That's right, these are the ones that kind of ratchet closed and then you press them fully closed and then they spring open. These are nice for crimping all sorts of different connectors like spade terminals, ring terminals, um, even like these little pins that you see, you know, in the ends of all these jumper wires. You can just pop it into one of the dies, crimp it closed, snap it open, and you're good to go. These are a lot more heavy duty and the ratcheting action is really nice. Um, so if you're looking to crimp a lot of things, definitely check out a pair of pliers like this. They're absolutely essential if you're doing crimping. This is our new Decade Resistance Box Kit. Now a Decade Box is a piece of equipment that you might use in a workshop when you're prototyping around a circuit design or in a lab in uh, an experimental setting where you need to select uh, among a variety of different resistances and plug them into a circuit without fiddling with a box full of discrete resistors. Uh, the Decade Box allows you to simply plug in uh, to your circuit a multi-resistor, if you will, and then dial in the resistance using these switches, these rotary switches, so that you can adjust on the fly and take measurements from your circuit. Things like this come handy if you're biasing a transistor, trying to create matched pairs, basically a lot of things that have to do with creating signal amplifiers. Um, this is what the kit looks like when you've put it together. Uh, it comes with everything that you see here, all of the rotary switches, the resistors, um, these banana jacks, uh, all of that stuff comes in the kit. It's a nice soldering challenge because it's all simple, widely spaced, through-hole soldering. And at the end of it, you have a tool that actually costs quite a bit of money if you go and buy one pre-built. Um, you can see here one of our engineers, Byron, who actually laid out this kit. He's put his into one of our aluminum enclosures and it actually turns it into a nice little piece of kit and it's something that is nice to see on your workbench. He's added some of these knobs which you'll find in the related products for this product page and uh, they make it a lot easier to switch these rotary switches because they can be uh, quite stiff actually. So um, pick up some knobs when you get the kit as well. They come in a variety of colors and sizes and they make it a lot easier to work with. Lastly, we have another tiny product. This one comes from FingerTech Robotics. This is the Tiny ESC. ESD stands for Electronic Speed Controller, and for any of those RC hobby enthusiasts, you're probably very familiar with what a ESC is. An ESC is essentially a motor driver. You have your motor, you have your battery, and then you have some kind of control system like this, and you need a motor controller 
or an ESC to be able to drive that motor forward backwards um, you know, with varying speed and all that good stuff. That is exactly what this little guy does. The tiny ESC, as you can see, is absolutely tiny, but it has a lot of interesting features associated with it. Um, you've got your wires here. This one connects directly to your RC receiver. I'll get into that more in a minute. This side connects directly to the receiver. You've got a little jumper over here that you can use to calibrate the positive or negative stop points um, so that when you press all the way up on the stick, it's at the end. If you press all the way down, it's at the end. Just a basic um, calibration mode. You have your battery input and then you have your motor leads. The other cool thing about these is they do have a BEC, which is a battery eliminator circuit. Basically what that means is that the motor might run off of one voltage, but your RC receiver might run off of another voltage, usually five volts. So you can put the voltage for your motor into this, and then it will actually feed the five volts into your receiver, so you don't need to have a separate battery for your receiver system. These speed controllers can accept anywhere from six and a half volts up to 36 volts. They can provide 1.5 continuous amps with up to three amps peak. They also have a lot of other cool features like overvoltage protection, reverse polarity protection, things like that. They're nearly impossible to kill, unlike a lot of cheap speed controllers. You know, you hook something up wrong, you put too much power into it, and it's just going to pop. These are really hard to kill. So here I've got basically a modified ActoBiddy. The ActoBiddy usually comes with a chassis that long. I just made it longer because I've got really messy wiring in here, and I've got a lot of stuff stuffed inside. Inside we have a battery. This is a two cell LiPo battery. So that's 7.4 volts, um, you know, nominal like eight something charged up. This does want at least six and a half volts. So you're gonna wanna use a two cell LiPo or more. So I've got the battery hooked up and that goes into this jack. Ow. Battery goes into here and then goes off to each one of the speed controllers like that. I have these coming back to my receiver module. So I've got one hooked up on this channel, the other hooked up on that channel. And as you can see, this is being powered by the speed controllers. And then I have some wires going back to the motor. So it's as simple as that. This is all you need to do just a basic um, robot using one of the standard RC receiver modules. Now, if you don't have an RC receiver module or if you want to use this with Arduino, you're in luck. The Arduino can very easily emulate these RC commands. You just use the serial library. This outputs the same signals that you would use to drive a hobby servo motor. So if you just do your basic servo commands, you can feed directly into the speed controllers and control the speed that way. So it's actually really easy to use an Arduino to do this. Right now we just have power plugged in. You can see they're just kind of blinking this red light. My transmitter is off and as soon as I hit the transmitter on, now they're getting a signal from the receiver. And if I move forward, both of the motors move forward, you see that one light is actually solid red and the other is a yellow. So that means this one is full reverse and then the blinking is a full forward because they're you know reversed from each other. And if I go the other way, they switch. The Tiny ESC is a great speed controller for controlling these really small motors because you can get 1.5 amps or up to 3 amps peak out of them, so it can actually drive a pretty decent sized little motor and you can get a good amount of torque out of it. Um, Fingertech Robotics Tiny ESC is kind of like the speed controller used in the BattleBots competitions, either the um, beetle weight or the ant weight competition. So, if you're looking for a really lightweight motor controller that has a pretty good punch to it, definitely check out the Tiny ESC. So these are some of the new products that we have for this week. We have the alligator jumpers, we've got the crimpers, we've got the very e-textile friendly battery, and of course we have the Tiny ESCs. We have even more new products on the website, so go ahead and check that out at sparkfun.com, and we'll be back again next week with even more new cool products. See you then.